Smiley from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Sunday, September 8th. So today we have the moon in Scorpio all day. And of course, with the moon in Scorpio, we have our detective hats on. Yes, we are in the emotional and spiritual realm of our, let's call it inner self. We are putting the detective hat on in order to unearth the darker parts of self from the old version of self, the old realm and reality, the old emotional disposition, the old mental plane in order for us to see again, what needs to stay, what needs to go. This is an intense time because we have to do the shadow work to really illuminate the parts of self that it's holding us back from truly pivoting and going after a brand new vision, brand new goal, brand new path. There is an intensity that comes with the Scorpio energy, good, bad, or otherwise. And of course, under the influence of Virgo season, the Virgo energy and Scorpio energy were not messing around. We're flipping tables, so to speak, in order to figure out where the darkest parts of us are still alive and well, creating programming and conditioning to hold us back from allowing our higher self to take the lead. The Virgo energy, of course, wants to identify the problem, especially in the mental plane where programming and conditioning is concerned to flip the script in our favor. And the Scorpio energy, again, is how we transform. We eliminate the old, we integrate it, we operate from the state of wholeness, we merge all of those fragmented parts of self back into a whole state before we can actually illuminate a new perspective, new truth, new vision, new goal, new projection of where it is that we would like to go from here. And of course, that clarity comes when we move into Sagittarius energy. This is also the last day that Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information, communication, how it is that we express ourselves, will be in Leo energy. Mercury is going to re-enter the Virgo energy, his rulership, here tomorrow on the 9th. And of course, we're still in the post-retrograde shadow period until the 11th. If you haven't listened to September's energy forecast as of yet, I'm going to recommend you do so. If you haven't listened to your Zodiac forecast for the month, I'm going to recommend you do that. Bust out your Virgo season e-guide, really capture what's going on for you at this particular point in time, what you're focused on, what the problematic areas are, where it is that you're busting out at the seams, just wanting to pivot, take a chance to initiate a new creation, new project, new version of self, new path, new direction in your life. And of course, when we put all the pieces together under the Scorpio moon and the Virgo sun, we are definitely going to have a bigger, broader picture on what needs to end, what needs to die, and what we have to do to build, to create, to bring something new to life. So with all of that being said, there are 15 different aspects taking place here today, a super busy day in the cosmos, mostly because again, The Scorpio energy does not mess around, nor does the Virgo energy mess around. And with these two, uh, we're going to call them stars because they're luminaries, with them working together in order to really uncover, unearth the darkest parts in our programming, in our conditioning that continuously blocks us from moving on and moving forward, you best believe we are going to get real, raw, and vulnerable with ourselves. Out of those 15 different aspects, 11 of them are going to involve the moon. So we have the sun in Virgo energy directly opposing, sitting across from Saturn. Saturn is the Lord of Karma. He's retrograde in Pisces energy. The Pisces and Virgo axis is the axis of healing. We have this annual opposition. It happens once every year where the sun sits across from Mr. Saturn. And of course, this is time for us to shine a bright light on our goals. We really reevaluate where it is that we're at, what it is that we're actually building towards. Now, granted, we are in a closure chapter, meaning we have to wrap things up before we can initiate something new. However, sometimes it is good for us to understand where it is that we would like to end up in order to examine the distance from where it is that we're at to where it is that we desire to be so that we have full illumination of what is blocking us, what we can't take with us, who we can't take with us. And that particular framework, of course, helps us to identify the problem in order for us to fix it, to heal it, to repair it, to resolve it, freeing us to move into a totally different path. Now, this is a harsh interaction. Let's not lie about it. It's going to illuminate where it is that we're a little bit disappointed with certain situations and circumstances, certain chapters that, of course, ended 
we are kind of sitting in the funk. There is a harsh reality check that comes with Mr. Saturn. And because we are in a closure series, an ending of a chapter, there is a lot of emotion coming up, fear, doubts, and insecurities of where it is that we want to go from here. There are many of us that will convince ourselves to just deal with it, to just settle so that we can essentially avoid accountability and responsibility for doing all of the hard things that happen to be the right things in order to set ourselves free. The moon in Scorpio energy going to make a positive interaction with Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money. She's in her rulership in Libra energy. And of course, this is going to highlight new wants, new needs, new desires for our physical realm, for our routines, for our relationships, for our money matters, for our long-term goals. And you best believe these are deep-seated passions and desires. This is what the Scorpio energy does, is it shows us what we truly crave in life. And when we realize what it is that we're truly passionate about, truly inspired to do and pursue what we truly want, need and desire for us to feel happy and fulfilled, equally, we realize what is blocking us, the fears, the doubts, the insecurities, the people, the places, the circumstances of our present day moment. The moon then going to make a positive interaction with that north node in Aries energy who is trying to get us on the right path to get to know thyself, to build the relationship with thyself, to understand the new mission, the new goals, the new projects, if you will, that this new version of self wants us to do, wants us to pursue. We are definitely thinking about the future. And because the moon in Scorpio is very detailed in kind of getting in alignment with our gut, with our intuition, with our passions, with our desires, we're we're starting to realize that we do have an opportunity to move forward, to grow, to heal, to fix, to repair thyself, to build again a stronger connection, not only with our ego self, but with our higher self as well, really striking a healthy balance to operate from a place of wholeness. The moon is then going to make a positive interaction with Jupiter, the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, and blessings, who of course is in the Gemini energy, very divided, sitting on the fence of our options, our opportunities for growth, for expansion, for really pushing us out of our comfort zone, pushing us into new foreign territory for us to dive into a brand new learning chapter. Now, because Jupiter is being positively aspected, he's bringing a little bit of hope, a little bit of optimism, a little bit of confidence. Confidence. We are starting to piece together a new goal, new vision, new dream, what we're interested in, what we're excited about, where we want to kind of lean in to a new path, a new direction. The moon is then going to make an awkward interaction with Neptune. Neptune, of course, he is retrograde in his place of power in this Pisces energy. This is water on water action, but it's an awkward interaction, which means that we're likely going to sit in the confusion. We're likely going to sit in the overwhelming emotions of figuring out what is on our to-do list. We realize that it's too long. We realize what we're up against trying to make these changes and make this pivot. Suddenly, everything becomes to be too much. And what do we want to do? We just want to curl up in a ball and fast forward through this particular energy, through this particular chapter of our lives. But of course, we can't do that. So what do we do? We kind of move into la la land where things aren't as harsh, aren't as pressurized. Now, the good thing about moving into la la land is that we get a little bit of a reminder of what it is that we want to do, what we want to pursue, what we want to build, what we want to create without the pressure of realizing what it actually requires in our physical realm to get from where it is that we're at to where it is that we desire to be. Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information, communication, how it is that we express ourselves. In the final degrees, the 29th critical crisis degree of this Leo energy as he prepares to again kind of move into his rulership again here in this Virgo energy here tomorrow, Mercury is making a very harsh interaction with Neptune. Again, retrograde at the 29th critical crisis karmic degree of Pisces energy. So this isn't going to feel good. This is like confusion 101. First of all, Mercury, who rules over our lower level intellect, who's in the heart and soul of the Zodiac in this Leo energy, we have a little bit of an idea on what we need to do. It is going to require us to be bold, brave, and courageous to kind of speak up, speak out, kind of dance to the beat of our own drum to initiate a new path to move forward where, again, we can fully express our real, true, raw, authentic self. 
Neptune, on the other hand, because he's retrograde in this Pisces energy, this is a time for us to kind of deal with life as it is, not for the way that we wished it would be. This is time to kind of wrap up chapters instead of start them. And so the conflict here is that our headspace is thinking about what we truly want, what we truly desire. Neptune, on the other hand, making it very confusing on how it is that we're actually going to do all of those things when realistically, the karmic chapters haven't quite wrapped themselves up. We need an ending before a new beginning can actually take form. And we're super overwhelmed with the to-do list at this particular juncture on what actually needs to be done to wrap up these loose ends, to close the door on old chapters, and again, have the time, the energy, the space to dive into something new. Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money in her rulership in this Libra energy is going to make an awkward interaction with Uranus, the great awakener, who of course is now retrograde in Taurus energy. So Venus actually rules over the Taurus energy that Uranus is in. And again, Uranus's whole, you know, MO of being retrograde in this Taurus energy is to highlight where it is that we're overly attached and connected to the physical realm, to people, places, and things. And essentially where it is that we have a death grip on the old because it's tried, tested, true, and comfortable, even though we know that we can't take those particular aspects of our physical realm with us in this new chapter. So what this does is it sends a jolt of restless energy through our physical bodies. Again, take a listen to the Ascension forecast for this week to understand where this energy is going to manifest in the physical form. But basically, we are getting shook up to show us where it is that we're bored as hell, discontent with certain situations and circumstances in our physical realm. It's like we're so bored that we're willing to take a risk. We're willing to put ourselves out there just to spice things up. We're ready to grow. We're ready to change. We're ready to see that growth and change actually manifest in the physical form, but we don't know how to go about it. We don't know where to start. We don't even know what it is that we actually could do to bring a little bit of spice back into our physical realm. The moon in Scorpio then going to trine Saturn. So a trine is a beautiful, beautiful nudge in the right direction. And Saturn, of course, who is retrograde in Pisces energy, this is water on water action. Water and water action is very cleansing. It purifies us. It restores us. It refreshes us. It renews us in our faith, in our dreams, in our creativity, in our intuition. And so this particular energy, although Saturn tends to bring a little bit of a harsh reality check, not in this way. In this way, we're seeing our ability to get into touch with our passions, with our desires, and we are starting to see where it is that some steps could be taken at this particular juncture to set the foundation down on what it is that we want to be building towards. Now, granted, with Saturn retrograde and Pisces energy, this is about deconstructing the old. This is about collapsing the old, especially where our beliefs and our dreams and our visions are concerned. But this is a trine, which means that we have realized, whether it was out of the discontentment between our heart and our head, the restlessness that just came in with Venus and Uranus's pop off. Either way, there was some sort of realization what we could do to make a change, what we could do to start building towards something new. And this is a, let's call it a refreshing deep dive in our soul, in our spirit, in our la la land to remind us what we actually have power and control over, what we actually want to do, what we actually want to pursue. The moon then goes ahead and sextiles, beautiful interaction with the sun in Virgo energy. Again, we love Scorpio and Virgo energy working together. We are definitely going to resolve some issues. We are going to unearth new perspectives, new information. And of course, anytime that the sun and the moon come together, we know there's going to be a new emotional awareness pop off what we want to do, how we want to do it, where we have to go how we're going to get there, all of those details, those little tiny bits of details that the sun in Virgo really specializes in. We are using our intuition. We are also using logic and practicality to form a plan, a path, a strategy on how we're going to actually make a move from where it is that we're at and gain closer proximity to where it is that we desire to be. The moon is then going to make an awkward interaction with Mars. 
So Mars being the god of war, ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desires, even our anger. He's in cancer energy now, a water energy as well. But this is an awkward interaction, which is likely going to, again, kind of trigger a defensiveness, a protectiveness, if you will. That's Mars in cancer energy, where we're realizing, again, we just realized where we want to go from here. We're realizing the, the details of the plan, of the strategy, both in our mindset, our heart space, and then in the physical realm that have to be acted upon in order for us to gain closer proximity and a great, greater momentum towards our goals, our visions, our dreams. Mars and Cancer energy, and again, Cancer energy is so attached to the past. We are fighting and protecting and defending what it is that we've already built, already created. This is the point in time when we're going to start talking a little bit of fear into the dreams, into the vision that we just had to try and convince ourselves to settle, to try and convince ourselves that what we got going on here should be enough. Emotionally speaking, this is going to trigger and activate a lot of defensiveness, a lot of, let's call it mama bear syndrome, where we are just super sensitive. We are being triggered and activated the minute that we think of changing anything. And we're getting overwhelmed with all of the things that we would have to change in order to find ourselves in that la la land vision, in that goal, in that dream. The moon is then going to make a positive interaction with Pluto. So Pluto rules over the Scorpio energy just as Mars does. So there's an intensity here and it's a beautiful thing coming out of that little pop off with Mars that kind of has us a little bit passive aggressive and defensive and protective of what it is that we've already built and where it is that we're resistant and making some changes because Pluto empowers us. And he is retrograde at the 29 critical crisis karmic degree of Capricorn, which means that the old world needs to die. The old structures that we had built, the foundations of our lives that we had built, they now need to be, I'm going to say, deconstructed, most of them, uh, definitely strengthened if there's any remnants left over that we actually care to hold on to. But at the end of the day, Pluto is about transformation and we are flipping the script in a very positive way, an empowered type of way. We're understanding where it is that we feel real and raw and vulnerable. And again, Mars would have exposed that. And we're flipping the script to understand that we can use that pain as a fuel, as a source to lead us into something a little bit more powerful, a little bit more in alignment with our heart space, with our head space, with this new version of self. This is going to be an intense realization. We love Scorpio energy and Capricorn energy working together as well because the water from Scorpio energy allows something new to grow. And this is likely to do with our long-term goals, our visions, our dreams. The moon is then going to make a harsh interaction with Jupiter. Jupiter being the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, and blessings. And this Gemini energy, again, on the fence about a lot. So we're coming out of a very powerful shift in our emotions and our mental plane. We're having some realizations on where it is that we would like to go. And then suddenly we aren't optimistic. We're not confident at all. We are just leaning all the way into the pessimistic. This isn't going to work. Can't imagine getting rid of this person. Can't imagine throwing myself into a new situation or circumstance. We start speaking fear into a lot of the goals, the visions, the dreams that we were just excited about. Normally, Jupiter brings optimism and confidence. Well, that is gone by the wayside. We are going to kind of slip into the darkness, if you will, but fear not. That's where Scorpio energy is at its most powerful. We have to examine the inner dialogue, the fears, the doubts, the insecurities in order to flip the script and actually create something better to encourage us to move on and move forward. Shortly thereafter, we have the sun in this Virgo energy making a positive interaction with Chiron, the wounded healer who was retrograde in Aries energy. And this is gonna open us up and realize that, guess what? It's a scary thing to be thrown into a new learning chapter. It's a scary thing to evolve and to grow. It's a scary thing to actually integrate the particular harsh, tough love life lessons that we all just went through. It is hard to sit in acceptance with the lessons we've just learned. But we also see where it is that this is a path of healing. This is a path of empowerment. This is a path of realizing that those not so nice thoughts and emotions of those tough love life lessons that our old version of self just went through happened so that the new version of self could walk out of 
that particular collapse, that particular dysfunction, that particular karmic chapter. The new version of self, again, we're empowered. We're feeling pretty good about ourselves. We're seeing where it is that we have the ability to boss up, to really learn something new and to integrate those particular life lessons that we just learned the hard way so that we don't make the same mistakes again. The moon is then going to make an awkward interaction with that north node in Aries energy. This isn't good. It's neither good nor bad. It's just stepping back and saying, okay, well, I have a different perspective of where it is that I would like to kind of grow from here. I have a different emotion now backing a different vision and goal that I just conjured up earlier in the day. So I'm actually not as sure about the step that I thought I was sure of earlier on in the day. Again, we had the moon and this north node pop off very early in the run of this very crazy cosmic day. Now we're just not so sure that that same move that we were confident about earlier in the day is the right move for this version of self with this new level of awareness to actually make. The last thing that we have going on here today is the moon making a very harsh interaction with Chiron. So just when we were feeling good about it, just when we were feeling like we were growing and learning and evolving, just when we felt like we were integrating the tough love life lessons so that we wouldn't make the same mistakes again, suddenly we're ripping those particular wounds wide open. Now, are we afraid of that? Nope, shouldn't be. We know that the minute that we illuminate a negative narrative, the minute that we illuminate heavier emotions, the Scorpio influence is going to flip it into something powerful. So again, with the Virgo season, highlighting the issues, the problems in order for us to fix it, heal it, repair it. And now the moon and Scorpio energy pushing us into the darkness, pushing us to face our fears in order for us to use that particular, let's call it weakness, in order to flip that into a sense of power and control, that is the name of the game. That's how we do the shadow work. It's why things get intense. It's why we lose ourselves into the darkness. It's how we pick ourselves up, dry ourselves off, and prepare ourselves to fight. Fight against the old version of self, that old narrative, those old emotions, those old memories, and actually find ourselves in a better situation, better circumstance, better version of self because of it.